from California. We grow it every season. Our hands we need to feed, and we grow it for a reason because we love our homegrown. What a day we have planned. Oh my goodness. Exciting. I can't, I can't, so I can't contain myself. I'm going to fangirl yeah, out so hard today. I'm going <laughs> to fangirl out so hard today. <laughs> well, at the moment, oh, we've all been kind of well, waiting for it for a while. So, sorry, yeah. Bernie. Yeah. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. Can I be heard? Okay. I, I'm getting a little. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm just getting. I'm just getting a little little feedback here, so I'm just making sure it's not me. There you just go. made it in time. Had to go up. pick up the kiddos from school. I'm excited. Oh yeah, yeah. Spe our special time kind of threw us all off today, but we'll do yeah, anything yes. for Mr. Growit, right? Like yeah. we will make Mr. it happen Grow for Mr. Growit. That's the time. Then that's the time. <laughs> then that's the time. We say yes, sir. That's right. That's right. I right. think he's just popping in now. So let's do it. Let's do a quick little introduction of ourselves as we're, we're waiting for him to pop in Ooh. here. So I am Mama Kush 420. We have Mr. Gannix and the beautiful Sea Bunny down here. And we are the crew of Home Growth, the community. Yes, yes. And we are so excited. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we are. Yes, yeah, so we've been waiting for this, this moment for a while. Yes. <laughs> Hello, hello. Hi. Hey. Happy Wednesday. How's it going? Welcome. It's, welcome. It's going. How are you today? Happening. Sorry, I'm fangirling out already. <laughs> I can't hold it. <laughs> I've been trying to hold it. I've been trying to contain it all day. It's just not happening. <laughs> so I'll just get that out there right now. <laughs> I appreciate sorry, you having Chris. me on. Welcome, welcome oh, Chris. This is Home Growth Community. We're happy to have you. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. This is this is awesome. Um, I've tuned into a couple of your live shows before, and uh, it seems like a fun time. So I'm ready. Oh, we're yeah, nice. yeah, we're we're yeah, here for giggles and laughs. That's what that's our that's our ammo. <laughs> have fun and, and learn something. Sweet. Yeah. So so I am Mama Coach Four Twenty. We have Mr. Gannix down here and the beautiful Sea Bunny. We make up the crew yes. of Home Grow the Community. And feel Anybody free to um, feel free. Yeah, Grove. feel free to have a have a smoke. We don't know, we don't run a clean show here, so if you no. feel like you would like to partake, go for it. Because I am. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, actually, uh, quick story. I took a bong rep two days ago. Took a couple bong reps for the first time in like two months, and uh, I got first of all I got blasted off of it. It was it was great. <laughs> I miss bong reps. I love bong reps, but. Uh, you know, I cleaned out the water, but the bong was still dirty. And like the next day, oh, I was destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. Oh, yeah. Yesterday was better, a little bit better. I felt good. Uh, overnight, <laughs> last night, I thought I was going to die. I didn't know if I was going to have to cancel today or what, but now I feel a lot oh, better. Oh, no. Today. But I'm holding off oh, on smoking I'm doing edibles. So I got some edibles here. Um, I took oh, uh, nice. one of these earlier. These are Delights. Uh, it's a watermelon, 10 milligram. And they one of these. A buddy of mine actually visited Las Vegas. That's where I'm from. That's where I live, for those that don't know. And, uh, you know, Transit City, everybody comes in vacation. Uh, and he yeah. didn't want to take it on the plane ride home. So he's like, dude, here, take them. I think he only had a oh, couple nice. of them out of there. And so I've been slamming these down the past couple of days. Because, uh, just <laughs> do they, my lungs do they taste all right? Now. They taste great. Yeah, they taste fantastic. Oh, good. Nice. 
Hi, Chad. Welcome. We had Chad on our show last week, so I'm glad to see him. He's here. Chad's. We're actually going to be we're going to be hanging out with him on Saturday, actually, on his show. We are. Yeah, we're going to be on his show. Oh, Miranda, welcome. Yeah, we're going to be on his show next uh, next Saturday. You were saying that you just took a bong rip for the first time in two months. What's your what's your preferred way to smoke? Um, I smoke a lot of blunts. I, I rotate around, right? So like actually when I'm here in the office, I usually just do bowls. I don't like to do bongs. I don't, I don't like to do uh, joints or blunts just because it stinks up the house. I have a three-year-old right. daughter now. So like, you know, I have uh, air filtration here and stuff like that. But still, yeah. I don't want to don't want to go. I like to go outside for those things. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, at nighttime, it's either a joint or a blunt for the most part. So nice, nice, nice. And what's, what uh, what's your, what's your right favorite now? strain you're sm- smoking right now? Uh, I, I got some uh, Queen Anne's Revenge. So uh, this Ooh. is one that I actually, uh, it's by formerly TGA Genetics, and I went to Subcool, rest in peace, Subcool. Then I think Miss Jill uh, took over that. Um, so I got it from her and, um, it's, it's so great. It's one of my favorites from back in the day. Well, I'll say back in the day, but like, I think it was like four or five years ago when I grew this plan out and it was incredible. I told the story a million times, so I won't, I won't bore some of the audience with the same, same story I talk about <laughs> over and over and over again, but beautiful plant. I love the narcotic high that you kind of get from it. And, um, I had a couple that I grew from, uh, so I had a clone cut clones and immediately did a 12-12 light cycle. So they blew up and then went into flowering it away. And just these two tall plants, just one branch going up. Uh-huh. So I had this and now I've got a little bit of, a um, little bit in my can of troll right back there. Um, oh, nice. Storage. Yeah. How do you I'm like that can of troll? Storage. What's that? How do you like that can of troll? I love it. I mean, it definitely has its downsides, but for the most part, I absolutely love it. Um, I've said it a couple different times to my audience where it's like, I've actually had to harvest and then go on vacation. So I harvest and then come back, uh, you know, a long weekend vacation or even a, a week long, come back and everything's dried, good to go, ready to smoke, you know? So, so it's, it's like, like an automated oh. system, basically. You can yeah, pop, exactly. Throw it's it right just, in there and you're good to go. Yep. Harvest the plant, cut it, the individual yeah. branches. I take some of the, the larger fan leaves off, put it into the can of troll, Boop, 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 press the start button, and then it'll automatically do the temperature and dew point, which you can kind of translate. The, it also says the humidity as well for those that go by humidity, temperature, humidity, and then it keeps it like that stable. And then it'll automatically switch it over to different conditions if you want for the st- uh, curing stage. So you can actually, oh. up, you can set your drying stage however long you want it, whatever temperature Ooh. you want it. And then the curing stage, and they also have a storage stage too that you can flip over to, so you can really have oh, it wow. automatically go to three different settings if you'd like. Wow, that's pretty cool. Wow, I had that's somebody, amazing. Uh, Frankie's was yeah. asking the other day. He said, "I'm looking at this Canatrol, and uh, I want to know a little bit about it." And I was like, "Yeah, actually, you know, I'm pretty interested in it too." And he said, "Mr. Grow, it has one. Mm-hmm. Ask him when he comes on." Then <laughs> I said, "Okay." Well, yeah, <laughs> there's a couple downsides to it, and uh, yeah, I've been pretty vocal in regards to the downsides. I hope they go mm-hmm. and take some of this feedback and improve uh, this. Mm-hmm. But uh, a couple different downsides: the size, it's very small. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have to scatter harvests now, so like I'll harvest a plant. Right. A couple days later, I'll be able to harvest another Aww. plant because I'll kind of be able to consolidate branches up to the topper shelves um, as things kind of condense down and then I'll be able to harvest my second plant, um, you know, and so on and so forth. So I scatter harvest now. Um, I also don't like how there's like, in order to kind of keep maintain the humidity, they have like a sponge in there. It's a wet sponge. Oh, you wet the sponge. When the sponge dries out, it it says it on the machine there, but like you get no other notification. Like there's not, it's not connected to your iPhone or anything. There's no alarm system. So, like, you can totally just completely ruin harvests from over drying if you're not looking at that oh. uh, screen every single day, you know, oh. so and kind of keeping an eye on that. Um, there is a back yeah. spot in, in the back was like a drip pan. So, like, during the drying phase, mm-hmm. it'll drip out some of that moisture level into the pan. That okay. can overflow. I haven't had that happen, but that can easily, oh, okay. uh, you can easily, you have, to, you have to monitor it. You know, it's one of the things you have to monitor. Yeah. And then um, another downside, uh, one final downside that I can think of is the price. Price is just outrageous. 
one thousand six hundred dollars yeah. for this device. It's like wow. out of control. And so yeah. I hope that they're That's, able to make some improvements and able to, I don't know, improve their operations over there to where they can bring down the price because right now it's just out of a lot of people's budget, you know? Yeah. Well, especially yeah, for a home is, grower. I mean, this is this yeah. is the perfect device for a home grower because you you want to be able to harvest one or two plants, put it in, get ready, and just keep that cycle going. And if they've priced majority of the people out of the market they're not going to succeed unfortunately they have to be able to bring that down and and make it more affordable for for the people i completely yeah. agree but i do think it, this yeah. technology is this is the future right i mean right now we we dry in a, a lot of people dry and grow tents yeah. they add in a humidifier dehumidifier fan um, you know some exhaust to some people to exchange the air but there's a lot of maintenance in regards to that versus putting into a box. And like I said, I went on vacation and came back. I had didn't have to change yeah. anything, you know? So I feel like uh, other companies are probably going to come out with similar devices like this. And then yeah. hopefully that'll bring the price down, right? Once there's competition. And I think, geez, five, 10 years from now, everybody's going to be using something like this. I, I agree. I agree. The precision, yeah, the precision on the dry is unmatched, right? With the, the when you're drying in a grow tent, you get the swings, right? It's so hard to yeah. keep it stable. And I know people swear, oh, mine's super stable. But, you know, there there are some swings, more swings than you think. Um, yeah. And this well, my time, house here, from summer to winter stable. is like, it's crazy different. Like mm -hmm. my, my mm -hmm. best dry time is mm -hmm. in the summertime because it's so humid. And I can yeah. actually maintain it better when it's humid out compared to when it's yeah. super, super dry. You know, yeah. so. And each each person has their own environments that they're fighting against. I I fight against. We're in the middle of winter right now, and it is so dry. I looked in my tents today; it was twenty percent, and I'm like, oh, my my humidifier ran out, and so I had to quickly fill that up. But twenty percent in my veg tent, I'm like, oh, my poor girls. I felt so bad for them, but I'm just fighting with the with my my environment. I just need to get a bigger humidifier, but you know, this is what I'm fighting with over the winter. Now you you said you you were in um, in the desert. You're in um, in Las Vegas. Uh, now you, you probably fight with humidity issues quite a bit with your with your grow tents. I would assume. Yeah, yeah. I'm always having to increase the humidity. I mean, I've got one of those. Uh, it's 23 percent right now. I don't know if you can see that or not, but 23 percent humidity just here in this room. <laughs> and so I have my yeah. grow room. I have a nine by twelve grow room. And I have two tents within it. I have a two by four and a four by four. So I have a humidifier in just the main lung room because I'm trying to control the temperature oh. and humidity in that lung room. So anything that's uh, being brought into my grow tents passively, mm -hmm. uh, it's of the proper RH and temperature. And that works out very well. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Now, do you, do you have any troubles maintaining that lung room? Uh, I mean, I used to when I was inexperienced, but now it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier with the AC Infinity humidifier. They have uh, they have mm. this large one, and they have a smaller one. I have both of them. I have the large one and the long oh, nice. one. It's, just, it's so easy to just keep it stable. I've had a ton of humidifiers. Yeah, that's a beautiful piece of like, equipment. Yeah, it, there, it's really good. I've had a ton of different humidifiers in the past, and some are better than others, but for the most part, it'll it'll go up to like a, a certain set point, then it'll drop down like five percent. It won't kick back on until it drops down that five percent. Then it kicks back on, so those swings happen. Now with the AC Infinity one, I, I don't have that problem. Yeah, I heard how you big and is, how big is that actually. one? Um, the smaller one is, jeez, oh, I don't know, a foot and a half tall, maybe, and maybe uh, maybe a foot wide by foot so it's like that with that one the bigger one geez i don't even know we're looking at uh probably two and a half feet tall maybe so, wow yeah i, I I'm heard probably you off the there. About <laughs> you'd have to look at it how... fact check me but yeah it's it's bigger <laughs> yeah but you guys were talking about on on an episode with kyle cushman that a lot of the other ones that you buy on amazon or, or wherever just other humidifiers they're not designed to turn on and off the way that we turn them on and off where the AC infinity yeah. one is actually designed to work with the controller so that you can have it switch on and off whenever it needs to yeah. be. 
So yeah. exactly, yeah. And AC cool. Infinity, they have that uh, temperature probe that you can put. Really, I have it hanging down directly into the middle of my grow tent. Now, some people put it in different areas, but and then it connects the controller. So yeah, my humidifier is uh-huh. using that temperature probe in order to determine when to turn on and off. Wow, that's cool. It's a, it's amazing the technology that's coming out now. You know, I'm I'm sure you've you grew back in the days with was HPS lightings and and all of that. So to see where that where the industry has come in those sh- really a relatively amount of sh- time where and where we can go in the future is just mind blowing. Yeah. So for those uh, who don't know, how long has Mr. Grow It been growing, and what motivated you to keep growing? I started growing back in 2010, so we're looking at about 14 years from now, which is crazy <laughs> to think that I mean, time flies. Time really, really flies. Really does. And what, got, what got me into it was really just uh, while I was a consumer. I started smoking when I was 12, I'm 38 now. Oh, wow. So I've been consuming for a very, very long time. But um, <laughs> not wanting to like go to dispensaries, not wanting to really buy through the black market. And yeah. I got my medical card and then I was able to grow legally since back then there wasn't any dispensaries in this state. And so I was able to grow and I'm actually still able to grow at this point. Um, But, uh, but yeah, just trying to save money, (laughs) you know, tired of spending (laughs) hundreds of dollars per round. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So what made you decide to, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, dear. (laughs) What made you decide get to um, write a book? Well, well, first was kind of like getting into video production um, and then kind of came the book from there. Um, so I'll talk about kind of getting into the video production side of things first. YouTube, that's where people know me from. Uh, I've always been into filming and editing. I mean, back in 2004, 2005, I was filming my buddies doing dumb things. <laughs> and I was always the guy behind the I camera. Was- and then putting together. <laughs> yeah, little... you had you had a prank channel, didn't you? You had a prank well, that was, channel. That was in 2014. So yeah, that was a little bit a little bit oh. past that. But, Back uh, in the jackass days. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I was always into kind of filming and editing, and uh, you know, when I started growing in 2010. I really started watching people on YouTube back in like, I think it was 2012, 2013. That's when I really found out that, hey, there are people actually on YouTube putting their grows in here. And yeah, who does this, right? Yes. Yeah. I was like, is this even legal? Like, how the heck are they getting away with it? So <laughs> I, I got inspired. Illegal. Yeah. I got inspired even from those folks <laughs> to start uh, doing my own video production, uh, being able to, you know, because I had the experience. I was using um, Sony Vegas back then, which is a, a video editing uh, software. So I was using that to start. And 2015 is really when I f- had my first grow video. And yeah, you mentioned it. It's, I had a prank channel from uh, 2014, <laughs> 2015, 2016. Um, I was mostly behind the camera on that. So I was filming a couple guys doing pranks. And that channel was very successful. 375,000 subscribers or something like that. Oh, wow. And then pulled That's the amazing. plug on that. Had issues with the, the, the guy that I was working with. He mm. got into drugs and he just really went downhill. Mm. And oh, I didn't really bad. see a future in the thing. So... I ended up switching over to the cannabis industry. So in 2015, I uploaded my first video. Um, and 2016, I was going nuts. And then all of a sudden, YouTube took down my channel. I had to have a new channel in 2017. Um, and that's the channel that you just showed on the screen right there, my main YouTube channel. Um, but, you know, that first couple of years, I was getting so many questions. You know, it's like everybody had questions on what to do. And I, you know, I was answering questions. I started a website yeah. so I could have like frequently asked questions on the website. Finally, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to put this into a book. So 2016 is really when I wrote that first version of Seven Steps to Grow Cannabis. I actually got it right here. So this is a beginner oh, grow book. Mine's upstairs. I do have it. Everybody's oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> kind of last minute. Funny failed. <laughs> I've actually seen you. I've actually seen you have it in the past. But- Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she normally does. But she just ran home. She just picked the kids up from school and quickly ran home and grabbed it dead online. So we're we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna publicly shame her or anything. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the first version of that was definitely back- glad. We are glad that you wrote the book, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, so that's the first book. That was the first vi- version uh, version was uh, 2016. I revised it, I think in 2018. And then third revision, which is what's out now, is this was 2020. Yeah. 
So um, they're a little bit dated now, four years, uh, three and a half years, actually, because it was the summer of uh, 2020 when this was actually released into a paperback version. Um, but yeah, that's really kind of what we got what got me going. I also, one other thing that was an inspiration is kind of seeing some of these other authors in their books. So I have just a whole bunch of books right here. I won't bring them all down, but Ed Rosenthal's books. I've got um, Jorge Cervantes books, which I really, really like. That was my kind of my go-to, the Grower's Bible. And reading them Aaron. and realizing that, <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's the one I have. Reading them and seeing just how like advanced it was. I remember reading it back in like 2011, and I'm like, this is like too complex. Give me something like I just want to get to harvest. Like I don't need to know all this crap. You know what I mean? So like I wanted to write something that's more beginner friendly, more that somebody right off the streets could pick it up and start getting going and, and get from seed all the way to harvest. And so that's kind of what inspired yeah. me really writing that book. That's one really nice thing about, book, right? about oh, both of these is it's uh, it's very user friendly. It's, yeah. it's for anybody. It's for brand new yeah. all the way up to somebody that's been growing for 50 years. You know, everybody can take something from it and brand new people can understand it. That's that's yes. the, the main thing that I love yeah. about these books. Because there's, anyone can, there's so much information out there. It can get overwhelming. Exactly. And a lot of times I'll, I'll tell a new grower, like, hey, just slow down. Like, bring it back because there's just so much information. You can go a million and one different directions with this plant. Just bring it back down to the basics, you know? And it's wonderful that your book does. It's the seven steps. It just breaks it down easily. So you can get from A to B and then you smoke your, smoke your joy at the end. Right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's and crazy then, how many people have been just reached out to me over the years. Like I started with this. And I'm just like, Whoa. yeah. So like, and then you uh, went the, from there um, and brought this. Now you're, this is the new, which way? There we go. Yeah. And you've got this one now. And this one, I know this one, you've been working on this one for, for quite a while. You actually, you actually took some time off from your garden talk show to, to dedicate. And you scared a lot of people with your goodbye post. You do know that. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of people that were really scared. <laughs> yeah yeah so you did your homework on me <laughs> oh oh I've, I've been following you guys right before before you even joined like when you were all separate that's when i was into youtube university and so this is this is why i'm like totally fangirling out because i've been watching you from the beginning and then and then when i watched the three of you join together and create the pod the podcast the from the stash podcast and then, you know, now you're coming out with physical products together. Like, you know, I'm, I am so happy for you guys to be able to take being a home grower and launch it into your passions. I think that's absolutely fabulous. And there, I'm fangirling again. <laughs> rightfully so, that. Mama, rightfully so. <laughs> But yeah, that book, uh, like you said, I've been working on it for a while. I took some time off from working on it. So I've kind of been off and on for the past two and a half years, I think, maybe even longer, uh, working on that book. And uh, just a lot of life issues. Like my, I lost my dad due to cancer in like a year, a year and a half. I was just a mess. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it took me a little while to, to get that book done. I started growing organic back in 2019, 2018, 2019. And... Um, everybody's kind of moving towards that. It seems like, you know what I mean? It's like yep. going from synthetic to try to be more eco-friendly, get all natural <laughs> yeah. products. Uh, a lot of people say that there's uh, better flavors with organics. I know uh, from my understanding, there's nothing really to back that up, but a lot of people claim that there's better <laughs> flavor with organics. So we get more and more people going towards organics. And I felt the same way releasing this book or writing this book to what I felt the first book to where the other books on the market were a little bit more advanced than a beginner could really comprehend in my opinion yes. Yes. now you got that uh, true living organics book uh, the, by the rev that was one of the ones that I, I read and i'm familiar with i felt like that one was kind of like a little bit more disorganized it was longer than it needed to be and so uh, i was inspired to really write my own book my own organic book yeah. and uh it took me several and years to make it, like i mentioned and i just released it on january 1st yeah. yeah, it's an absolute, and you were number one on Amazon bestseller. Yeah. So congratulations. Thank you. Say Thank you. Congrats. Yeah, number one bestseller yeah, for, awesome. let's see, it was a number one new release for a little while. Then it was a number one bestseller in, in house plants category. Then it was a number one seller. In <laughs> 
matters. You know, I'm up against Ed Rosenthal. I'm up against Jorge Cervantes. I'm up against so many great, mm -hmm. big, big names. Yeah. And for it to be yeah. one bestseller, I mean, even if it was just a couple of days, now they refresh it every four hours. So I'm up and down mm -hmm. in that spot. But uh, but even just to hit that spot is just insane. And I'm so right? thankful to everyone who has purchased it so far. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that people enjoy it and get some val good value out of it. For sure. It's As an a new girl myself, book. it has definitely been helpful. And like you said, out there, there's so much science talk, we'll, we'll call it, that it's mm -hmm. hard as a new bro new grower to understand what are you talking about. And you've broken that down and it is so much easier that someone like myself can read it and understand and really appreciative of that. <laughs> I'm glad she she doesn't that. grow organically. She, she tried organics once and she wasn't a fan. So for her to be able to sit down and read the book and, and actually give it a second yes. second thought is, is pretty <laughs> <Yeah>. good. <laughs> That's awesome. I, no, yeah. I wanted to say that. Oh yeah, she got gnats. She got terrible gnats. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say this was my most favorite page out of the whole book. Was your dedication <laughs> page? Now, can you could you just read this out out loud to us? Because I think this is so beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. This is a so dedication page. I'm surprised you knew that. The, well, that's what it's called. That's pretty cool. It says, <laughs> "My future wife." Samantha and our beautiful daughter Emma. May our journey together be as fun and rewarding as the organic gardens we cultivate. Aww. Isn't that beautiful? Oh. Teary moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm just <laughs> I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually tearing up a little bit with that because I know how much your family means to you. And it comes through. You know, I'm I'm a, like I said, I'm a fan. I've been watching. So we're we're just meeting, but I feel like I, I know you uh, quite well. <laughs> but I know how much your family means to you. And that just, when I read that, I thought oh, that is so from the heart. I just absolutely loved it. Yeah. Now, That's can, really can cool we, can we talk yeah, about your, your little daughter? Can we talk about her for a minute? Yeah, just she's three we months won't, old. We won't go into too much. It was, she's three months old now. Her name's Emma. Uh, three months as of the fifth. So actually she's almost Ooh. coming up with three and a half months now. Uh, time's baby, flying baby. like crazy. It's my first, <laughs> yeah, first child. Um, and it has just been a huge, huge life changer. I mean, very uh, sleep deprived. I only get five hours of sleep oh, yeah. a, a night now. I'm lucky yeah. to get anything more than get that. Get used to it. I don't know how people function. Get used to it. I used to get seven, eight hours. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, uh, it's, it's definitely life changing, but it's so rewarding. And just seeing her grow is just incredible uh oh, and i'm trying to capture watching, them all, all watch, pictures and videos and all yeah, that watch stuff. It, watching them experiencing life for the first time like the first time they they suck on a lemon you know it's like that's like the best time in the whole land you get a million pictures like i can just imagine have, your your iphone is just filled with pictures yeah, of her I have, <laughs> I have kids and i treat my plants the same way i feel like they're my kids you know you watch them grow from seed to you kick them out of your tent, which would be kicking them out of the house, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they're about 18. That's the way I look at my plants. They're like my, my kids. <laughs> mine, mine, are, mine are grown and still aren't out of the house yet. So I don't know what this kicking out of the house business is. <laughs> they keep bringing more in, though. I don't know. My house keeps getting bigger. I don't know. <laughs> I got a 24-year-old that's moved in. So, I mean, it does happen well, eventually, I think. Really? Oh, I'm curious. <laughs> so um, your book yeah. is also on audio, correct? My first one is. My second one I'm working your on. There's still the, the Seven Steps to Grow Cannabis is, and I read that one. Um, and then the Organic Cannabis Cultivation, that one I'm working on the audio. This month has been just oh, so hectic, so I haven't even recorded the audio yeah. yet. My goal is February to record the audio and have it released no later than March 1st. So Audible is where it's on, where it will be on. And then, uh, so keep an eye out for that if you're into audio books only. I know there's to so many people that don't read regular books. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, they just go right after the audio books. So that's coming very yeah. soon. And Audible is... Well, that's what I do. I Amazon, toss it in my correct? ear and I'm in my garden. You know, I've got to, I throw a book in my ear and off I go. And I start working on my garden and I got Mr. Grow it in my ear telling me how to do it. It's fabulous. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Working in the garden. I know there's a ton of people who are uh, the drivers. You know, they're on the road all times or yeah. even yeah. a long commute exactly. to work. So they listen to podcasts, they listen to audiobooks and, and all that stuff. So 
Yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a new it's a new world. It's not, it it's not like the old days with the nowadays. from a library and you'd get a little tape and have to put it in. You know, it's so easy now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there so it if is. anybody so, doesn't have it, that book, it, get over there and mm -hmm. buy it and keep him at number one. And make sure you give him some yeah. ratings. He needs to. He's only has fifteen. He needs more ratings than that. We need to get that. Uh, we need to get yeah. that up there for him. He said number uh, one. He's got uh, more than fifteen people who bought that book. So we need to get <laughs> yeah. Five star in it. Yeah, yeah, we gotta we gotta support the community here. Yeah. I think that's connect yeah. the Canadian one too. So because we're 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 all Canadian here. So <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Now, Mister Mister Gord, I wanted to ask you. You've been I've been watching your videos, and you've been doing this well technique with your dry amendments, where you you just place all your dry amendments in one spot and then you're going to put the blue mat um, dripper over top of that. Where, where did you get that idea from? I've never heard that before. Um, well, I, I forget where I norm first heard it, but like I really heard more deeply into it from Michael box from a sustainable village. Mm. Sustainable village is a company that creates blue mats. And he had mentioned that in one of the podcast episodes, he's like, yeah, nutrient well to where you're kind of digging down into the medium then you're putting your organic inputs into the hole and then you're covering it with soil and then you're having that blue mat dripper direct uh, drip directly down onto that nutrient well. And so the problem I was running across is with the blue mats in particular, you're only really getting it dripping down into that one spot. Now it's, it is providing moisture, but that top layer where it's really important with organics to keep moist, the other parts of the pot weren't really staying moist. So that's why I did the nutrient well. Now there's also distribution drippers now, which I've used. Um, those are pretty good to where basically you put your blue mat carrot in and then there's like distribution spots that so you can have it like five different spots around the grow pot. So I use that pretty good with success, but the nutrient well, yeah, I mean, that worked out pretty good as well. Um, there are there's some controversy behind there. I've had so many people that are like, that's the stupidest thing to do. You always want to spread it across the medium and don't do that. It's bad and blah, blah, blah. But hey, my plants are healthy. I'm going to read my plants. <laughs> and they're, exactly. doing, they're doing great from it. So you know, oh, I feel fabulous. like yeah. no matter what you do, no matter what any of us do, there's always going to be the one person that's <laughs> a dumb idea. Why did you do that? You know, Why did you, you do that? 5, I was like, man, that's so cool. One person. No, that's dumb. You know, <laughs> it happens. They're out there. No, that's awesome. Actually, do you I like a, that idea. Do you get a lot of haters in your chat, or is everybody pretty pretty well behaved? Yeah, I mean, I'm I, I'm still always surprised by how many people are breaking YouTube's community guidelines. You know, mm -hmm. bullying, harassment, mm -hmm. racism, um, the sexist comments, just all that stuff is just, it's not allowed on yeah. YouTube. So, you know, those gets reported. I have moderators that uh, get rid of that stuff. If it's really bad, they just, uh, there's an option. I know a lot of people don't know this. There's an option where you could hide user from channel. So it's kind of like banning somebody oh. from the channel. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And so a bunch, I, the list of people who have been hidden from the channel yeah. is very, very long at this point. I mean, I had the channel <laughs> since this channel. Might have to channel ask you where, where that option is. Nothing for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can just, doing something right. <laughs> I think it's on the, the the back end dashboard where you can we can moderate that way. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I still get people who are breaking yeah. YouTube guidelines every now and then. That was a lot of construction criticism, which I appreciate, and mm -hmm. it's kept yeah, on there and visible and stuff like that. But anything yeah. that goes against YouTube guidelines, it's it yeah. gets removed, you know. And and yeah. if it's really bad, they get banned and. Yeah, unfortunately, there are still people out there that are just spreading this toxicity among the communities. So the best thing we can do is hide that stuff from it, you know? Yep, yeah, we've just ignore it, move on. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, we, we're just making the transition from Instagram over over here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so this is new territory for us and new new viewers and new chat. And thank you, chat, for being here. But this is all new for us. So we're, we're learning as, as, you know, and then we, we run into somebody that's not nice and doesn't have good intentions. And then it's like, oh, what do we do? And like, nope, ban them, move on. We're not, we're not playing that game. 
yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do and yeah i mean for you guys yeah. being so new on on inst on youtube i must say i mean 86 mm -hmm. people watching right now that's incredible can we get a thumbs up in oh. there? can we get some yeah. thumbs up i see 22 thumbs up oh, can we get goodness. up to 80 <laughs> Right oh, that there. would be awesome. Exactly. But that's great. Great well, viewership. I mean, you've got a great show. You know, you're, you're focused in you. on the home grow. There's not too many other shows out there that really focus in on the home grow. Very relaxed setting. You guys are awesome. Very kind. So, um, oh, yeah, I'm happy you guys you. are having success here on this really platform. appreciate that. We yeah, we, we went as far as we could go on Instagram and it was time to it was time to move it move it over. The the quality over there was not doing us any favors. Half the time we couldn't see the gardens that we were trying to look at and we're like, oh that looks nice. And we can't see and it it was yeah. not it was not good. So we've we've had much much more um, better reception over here, which has been which has been absolutely fabulous. And thank you so much for 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 doing that Instagram reel with us with your book. That was yes. so fun yeah, to was, do. It was. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to growing, um, Can I do a quick shout about out pests here. Oh, go ahead. Hold on one second, dear. I got to do a quick shout out to Papa because he's getting more and more trigger yes. happy. I think we have to <laughs> put out. Thank you, Papa, for running the scenes in behind yeah. for us. Yeah. <laughs> big, big ups to Papa. Okay, that's yeah. all we need. Thanks. That's all he gets. Uh, growing, <laughs> going back to growing and pests. Um, do you have a pest management routine you use, or? Yeah, I've had so many different routines over the years. It's crazy the stuff that we try, you know, over the years. <laughs> uh, basically to keep things simple um stick yellow stickies is the number one thing i usually have in every single grow pot is really to see anything flying around they get stuck to it now once i identify that i have a, some sort of a problem I, then i can take additional steps um, so i've used things as like mosquito bits before for fungus gnats uh, diatomaceous earth various sprays a couple of my top favorite sprays right now are mammoth can control awesome awesome spray it kills off so okay. much stuff one application of that, and then once the larva for fungus gnats then hatch and kind of go up, one more spray, and I'm usually done. The Amazing Dr. Zymes is another spray that I use. So those two are the main sprays that I use. I used to use a lot of essential oil-based stuff just as really a preventative more so. Um, so I used to use like uh, peppermint oil, um, neem oil. Those are the kind of the main couple ones that I used to use and then kind of rotate through. And I don't do that anymore. You know, I, I really just keep things clean, have the yellow stickies. And then uh, I do like to do a spray, one spray, no matter what, as a preventative before flipping the flower. So usually latent veg, right before okay. flipping the flower, do one spray of uh, the plant and also the soil. And then um, mm -hmm. I'm usually pretty good to go. Yeah, don't forget the, the soil. Yeah, just at the top of the soil, just real quick. Yeah. So both of those products yeah, a lot of that people you said, will the Dr. That. Zymes and the uh, Mammoth, you can you can do as like a soil drench with that as well? Not a soil drench, so just spraying just the soil. Yeah. yeah, so I use a foliar application for both of those. And I'll spray the plant, but just spraying the top of the soil. Yeah, so not as a not as a drench. Gotcha. Mosquito bits I use as a drench. So. Yeah, me too, actually. Oh, yeah. I use the dogs, yeah. but same thing. Yeah. Are, are you nice. still using the cardboard as a as a mulch layer over top of your pots to keep them to help keep them moist? Yeah, when I don't have the blue mats in, um, and actually I have mm -hmm. done it with the blue mats in. I just kind of place it over the blue mats, but it's kind of a little awkward. But yeah, still using the cardboard covers. And I get a lot of questions about that. Actually, is uh, mm -hmm. why use the covers? It's really for for me moisture retention. I talked about how I live in a dry climate, and the top soil dries out so quickly, so quickly. And when you're growing with organic inputs, keeping that top layer moist where the amendments are is important because you need those microbes in there active, breaking down those nutrients, cycling them, turning them to the nutrients for the uh, plant can uptake. So how, using cardboard, um, I've also used uh, mulch layer like uh, straw, barley straw. Mm -hmm. Those are the two main yeah. ones I've used as far as uh, for moisture retention purposes. Um, can also use cover crops. Uh, clover is a common one that I've used in the past as well. That helps with moisture retention. Uh, but yeah, still using the cardboard covers. I've used the same cardboard for three growths now. Uh, one of the main questions was, hey, does that break down? Uh, is it become flimsy over time? 
I'm not really pressing it down onto the wet medium. Mm. I'm just kind of letting it sit on that gently. And when you flip over the, the side of the uh, cardboard, you can see it's a little wavy as if it was a little moistured, right? But it's not breaking down. So I've been using the same cardboard over and over and over again for several grows now. Wow. Nice. That's, That's a great cool. idea because not everybody has access to straw or cover crop seeds or, you know, so it's something that can be used and you're reusing you know, you're part of the ecosystem yeah. here. Instead of wasting it, you're using it a second time, third, fourth, fifth time. Please. I've used cardboard in the past as well, and I, I have, I had no problems with it. Um, Reduce, it just reuse, aesthetically, reuse. I like, yeah, aesthetically, I like the barley, the barley mulch better. But that's just because I, I like things looking pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the cardboard is actually a pretty good idea because, like you said, not everybody has access to it or. You might get this great idea like oh i gotta have a a mulch top or a cover crop or something like that and it's like okay well all i have is cardboard so right it's there, something you can basic do it that. most people have within their home yeah most people have a and that would probably help with the, the gnats as well because the larvae can't come up and come through that so they hit the top and then that's it they can't go anywhere so unless they you know a couple get out the sides but yeah, so that would probably help quite a bit with uh, with pests as well. It's definitely helped decrease that population for sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, I feel I like it would help with like a mycelium layer as well because it would hold the moisture down. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So now I'm, I'm going to yeah. switch gears a little bit here. Can we, can we talk about this for a minute, please? This is amazing, yeah. and I'm so proud of you guys for doing this. Yes. So we've got yeah. the stash blend. Stash blend, yeah. And and the, the the three powerhouse over there created this. Can you can you tell us a little bit about this? Sure. So this is a product that we have developed with George Murray, who is a scientist, and we partnered with Growers House. And what it is is an, a plant additive uh, blend. So it's a blend of different uh, plant additives. It's got uh, corn seep liquor, seaweed extract, humic acid, silica. It's got some beneficial bacteria and mycorrhizal fungi, right? So it does have beneficial microorganisms in there as well. And we developed it, I think we started back in, what was it, 2020, 2022. Summer 2022 is when we first started testing it. Me, Rob from Cannabis Lifestyle TV, and Pigeons 420. And uh, we all tested for a full year before we felt that we were ready for release. And so we announced it, we released it uh, just this past summer. And uh, since then, it's been flying off the shelves. People really love it. And it's an additive. I just want to emphasize that where you're still going to need base nutrients, right? It's good with really any base nutrients that, that you use. So if you're using a bottled lineup, you know, General Hydroponics, Fox Farm, the list goes on. As long as you're having that base nutrients NPK, you can use this as an additive on top of it and use half, taste, half teaspoon uh, once per week. And you could use it safely throughout the entire grow. Now, some people will cut it off towards the end of flowering. Um, yeah, the scientist has mentioned, uh, George Mario had mentioned that you can do that. But I, I mentioned the question, hey, what if you're reusing, reusing the soil over and over again? He's like, oh, yeah, use it throughout the whole grow. So it's been working out fantastic. I really wanted silica to be in there because there's just so many benefits with silica. And, um, you yes. know, that's one of the things that kind of makes it makes it different there. But it's been great so far. People are loving it so far. You can get it on oh, growershouse.com. It's also on Amazon. So you can get it on Amazon as well. Uh, I think it's prime shipping. If it's not if it's not sold out of their inventory, it'll be prime shipping because you can get it within <laughs> a couple of days, usually depending on where you live. Um, but yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, it's been working out great. I know that yeah, um, it's you fabulous guys are stuff. trying, but I can't wait till you guys uh, to get it into Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We had some roadblocks with Canada, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, we know. Yeah, it's a shame. Registration out there is That's... completely different than the the states. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think yeah. as soon as you say that there's there's microbes like microorganisms in there, I think Canada Which goes. Which is whoa, unfortunate. Whoa, 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 wait a minute here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 well, wait. Yeah. Exactly. I've, I've come across that with the, other products. They're, well. they're allowed to grow it, but they can't have the good stuff to grow it with. That's right. <laughs> But no, I, think I think recharge, cool. even recharge is having trouble coming up here. They're, they're, they're having issues as well. So it's, it's not just you guys, it's the whole industry, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the mycorrhizal fungi in particular that they yeah. really don't mm. like. So 
yeah, nuts and bolt this in and recharge. So yeah, it's yeah, it's disheartening. <laughs> I had that yeah, with, uh, <laughs> great white, great white. I can get it here, but instead of like I was looking at the prices oh. for it over in the U.S. compared to here, and it was like you know pretty reasonable over in the U.S. But for me to get it, it was like ninety dollars. Oh yeah, for like really expensive container. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. But I mean, like really, <laughs> it's out of control. It is that's crazy. Control, but it's the micro. You know, no, no, Chris. I wanna, I wanna. We're just, we're coming up to about fifteen minutes to the to the end of the hour here, and I wanted to spend a little bit of time and um, talk about robin pigeons. Now, now, they they seem to say you're really professional on to online, but there's this other side of Chris that most people don't know about. I think I think the uh, the king of Las Vegas. I think was the quote. <laughs> King of Las Vegas, yes. Those guys are crazy. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was so funny because they both said the exact same thing. He's really professional online. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I could definitely let loose. And I think, it, you know, it comes down to content creation and my background as well. I mean, I was a manager at Amazon yeah. for eight years before this. I was actually a manager in sales before that for a cell phone company. I was a real estate agent for a very short period of time back in 2008 when it was like the worst time to be a real estate agent but like you have to be somewhat professional and then me first finding uh content on youtube about growing one of the folks that i really enjoyed watching was i don't even think he makes videos anymore was piss drunks 420 i don't know if anybody knows oh. knows him he's a very small no. creator but like watching his videos and just the way he talks and how professional he talked and stuff it's i realized i wanted to do that i realized that hey i'm i'm in this community as well like i can totally get away with with doing that route and making it informative. And so I just kind of stuck with it, but yeah, I mean, I think everybody can kind of let loose when the, when the cameras are off uh, or even like live streams like this, I feel, I feel like let loose smoking from the stash podcast on uh, Twitch. We right now it's all, it's all uncensored yeah. now, so we can say whatever we want, swear as much as we want, all that stuff. YouTube's a whole different battlefield. So <laughs> kind of keeping it professional yeah. is kind of better in order to kind of uh, be able to monetize things and reach a larger audience, yeah. not get suppressed, all that stuff. So yeah, yeah I totally, exactly. I saw the reel you put and you is a, compil <laughs> uh, a compilation of him and, and uh, pigeons and Rob saying the same Rob. thing. And I just laughed <laughs> pigeons. Yeah. <laughs> so for yeah, those that was, that was really funny. I was like, Oh, Mr. Grow it. oh sorry. <laughs> Say that again. For those who don't know, where can we find Mr. Grow It? You had said YouTube. YouTube is what I'm most known for. If you just search Mr. Grow It, you'll see a couple different channels will pop up. One's just Mr. Grow It. That's my main gardening channel. I have that since uh, 2017. Like I mentioned earlier, I had a different channel in the past that got terminated, unfortunately. It was 2015, 2016. So working on a new channel here. Um, I also have a talk channel with my podcast. I have a podcast called Garden Talk where I talk one-on-one -on -one with growers. So that'll pop up if you search Mr. Groat on YouTube. From the Stash podcast, if you search that on YouTube or all podcast platforms as well, you'll come across that. That's me, Rob, and Pigeons have that podcast. MrGroat.com, uh, at Mr.GrowIt on Instagram. And be careful on Instagram because there are a half a dozen or more accounts that are impersonating mm -hmm. me. A very yeah. big problem on Instagram for those that don't know. Yeah. You search Mr. Grow and you'll come across every profile except mine. You have to scroll all the way to the bottom in order to find me. So at yeah, they Mr. pushed Doc you down Grow, that far. At Mr. Doc Grow is the only one that's mine. All the other ones are fake impersonators. Yeah. I'll never try to hit you up through DMs and try to sell you anything. There's a lot of uh, mm -hmm. WhatsApp scams and seed scams and all that yeah. stuff. So I just really yeah. wanted to mention that because there have been so many people who have been duped in the past. Yeah, and then um, so I'm also on X. That. X platform, formerly Twitter, at Mr. Grow It. Okay. Nice. And your that Twitch. whole imposter thing is, is on really, Twitch. You, uh, know, you don't really. Twitch, too. Yeah, forgot okay. that. Twitch.tv yeah. slash Mr. Grow It. I stream uh, about once a month. I like to stream live events, too. Like yeah. if I go to a conference, like uh, when I was at MJ okay. BizCon, I think I streamed almost every day, just kind of kicking it, showing people what's going on. I was at the uh, cannabis conference last summer, showed people what was going on. So I like to kind of. Mm -hmm just walk around live events whenever I go, which is pretty rare, but I know we're going to the uh, Duke Gross Cup coming up, so I'll probably stream that. That's Are you? Oh, fun. That'll be fun. 
Well, yeah. Is there, is yeah, there that's, any that's going to be a, plans, a fun talk. Is there any plans for Canada? Any uh, shows yeah. in Canada? We're going to go up to Winnipeg area for a little while. So Manitoba, that's where pigeons lives up there. And so yeah. we've been trying to get up there for the past couple of years, but things have scheduling issues. And like I mentioned, my dad was yeah. cancer for a while. So I had to yeah. bail out on a trip and stuff, but uh, we're dying to get up there. Mm-hmm. I think we were thinking, we were thinking, uh, if I remember correctly, it was either August, I believe. So I think we're going to make it out there in mm-hmm. August. We're also going to be in Michigan. Yeah, don't come in the winter. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> we're also going to be in Michigan uh, for 420. So I forget what event is happening nice. in Michigan at 420, but we'll be there. And yeah, so we're doing a little bit more traveling this year. And yep. of course, MJ Chad BizCon. Westport's going to be there. Yep. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. And then MJ BizCon at the end of the year. So December, we'll be back in Vegas here uh, for MJ Biz. Right. Oh, fun. Yeah, that was and, really and fun. You, and you've been you doing a lot Vegas, of stash actually. interviews. Yeah, it was. You've been doing a lot of the stash interviews uh, together it, live. You, in your little studio in, in Vegas there. That was pretty pretty cool to see you guys all together, actually hanging out and, you know, in person together. It was a lot of really good vibes. Yeah, the in-person episodes are so fun. You know, whenever they're in town, we set up a little studio and we try to invite people over. And when they were here at NJ BizCon, we were able to get, a, you know, a handful of uh, three people, four people to come on. And so we had uh, Shane from Migro. We had uh, I Can't yeah. THC. We just released that one. We've got one coming up. Uh, uh, spoiler alert. This Sunday's episode, I believe, is Grower Joe, Basement Auto Flowers. Oh, nice. So they'll be on the show. Nice. And so, yeah, and whenever we're in person, we, we like to do these in-person ones. Uh, and We got we got Joe, Grower Joe coming on our show next week. Next awesome. week? Yeah. I believe it's next yeah. week. Yeah. yeah. Next yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. He's fun. And I think yeah. I can't THC. Yeah. Oh, I think he's, so he's hanging out in the chat right now. So, hey, yeah, um, hanging out yeah. in the chat. Yeah, sweet. So, yeah, good dude. Yeah, I, that's why I said all the yeah. all the cool kids are in the chat today. <laughs> all the cool kids are here today. <laughs> we would love if we could get all three of you on at one time. That'd be awesome. Uh, that'd be. Fun. I don't, I don't know if I'd be possible. able to get a word in. <laughs> But <laughs> that's how I feel half the time. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm never I able to get a word. <laughs> we did a show with uh, Jorge Cervantes, and that's coming out soon. It'll come out, uh, I think, early next month. And I got oh. one question in. One question. And oh. So, yeah. So I need to get him on my podcast to where I have full go. attention. You know. But yeah. yeah, it was a good episode. It was really, really good. Those guys are are awesome. But yeah, I uh, I don't speak fast enough. I don't interrupt people enough. So I need to I need to do yeah. that more. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's why I've been trying to Bunny tell Bunny. I'm like, well. I'm like, if I just keep going, like, just jump in. Like, that's why I was like, no, 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 you go. You interrupted me. You go. It's your turn. You know, she, Bunny's not used to doing uh, podcasts and stuff. She's very new to this. Uh, she no. didn't even want yeah. her show her face when when she first started. She's like, I'll join, but I'll hang out in the back. And we're like one show, two shows, no, one show on Instagram. And then we moved over to YouTube and we're like, you're coming along for the ride, dear. Come on. So that's awesome. It adds good balance. She's, you know what I mean? Having somebody yeah. who's a little bit, you know, doesn't talk as much. I think it adds good balance. So yeah, I'm that yeah. guy on from the stash. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So out of all the people that you oh that you've interviewed or hung out with on, on these podcasts, who, who was like the, what was the biggest moment for you? Like who was the biggest? Who was your fangirl moment? God, I can't believe this person's coming on today. That's tough because there have been a couple, but I had the one that comes to mind right away is Dr. Bruce Bugby. You know, once I got him on the podcast and had a conversation with him and geez, that was back in, I think December, 2021, if I remember correctly. So, or was it 2022? I don't remember, but I think it was 2021. So it was quite a while ago and I want to get him back on the podcast. But yeah, when I first got him on there, mind blown. It was just, <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. There's just somebody who I look up to so much. I went to his, um, I got actually got my cannabis cultivation certificate from Utah State University, which is his course. And so I, I worked under him and he's got a whole team of people over there. Great, very, very knowledgeable people. And, um, yeah, having him on was one of those times. Uh, I'll, I'm going to name off one more. One more is Jeff Lowenfels. 
So when I had him on the podcast, oh, he's just yeah. so excited about everything that's going on. And he's just yeah. it's, his, it's so infectious, his, his personality and just his he, excitement. He makes microbes fun. Right, he really he does. does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he makes soil fun. Like he just like ah, oh, he just wants to get right in there. <laughs> but those are the kind of people we need here. We need the people that make you know this boring organic topic that everybody thinks is you know more science. interesting. You know, yeah. we need those people to make it. Yeah. Fun. So the people that think it's boring go, oh, wait a minute, it's not that boring. I want to learn about this now. That's what we completely yeah. agree. Yeah. For sure. Awesome. Well, what do we have? Um, we have. I, 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 I think you let something slip uh, the other day, Mister. I think you have a Mister. Sly that's going to be on your sh on your podcast show. Uh, we were just on his show last, or I was just on his show last week. Scanic was Scanics was on his show the week before. And Miss Bunny's at the end of the month, so she's going to be going on Sly's show. So you had a, a podcast episode, your Garden Talk episode with him the other day. Yep, we recorded it. Uh, uh, it went great. I really, uh, really enjoyed that conversation with him. He's so cool. Sly, he a.k.a. Is. Local. Yeah. I'm, I hope I'm able yeah. to meet him in person sometime and have a sesh with him because he's just so laid back, so cool. A lot of good information. And uh, he's great. It, it, what he's doing over on Instagram with can of convos is yeah, really yeah. fun and entertaining. And I like the way he goes about his interviews because he's, you know, he's an in interviewer seat to where he's firing off questions at people. He does a great yeah. job. I was on his show once before and he invited me on his show mm -hmm. again. I think it's March because he has, he has a booked out. I believe it's March. If I remember correctly, I'll be on his show unless it's late February. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Anyways, I'll be on his show again and I'm looking forward to it. He's a great guy. Yeah, yeah really fun. Awesome. And then you had, you had the untrained astronaut as well. He popped onto our, our Friday night Gromy Gardens when we first uh, showed up on on YouTube, and he hung out with us for quite a quite a while. And we got to see all his so gardens. We, we had a little connection issue, but yeah, it was fun hanging him, out with him. So a couple weeks ago, yeah. yeah. I had no yeah. idea who he was. I had no idea who he was. I, I saw him at MJ BizCon. I seen him filming the Fast Buds booth, and then I was like standing next to him. He's like, hey. You know, very quiet, very like to himself <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Hey, I watch your stuff. Good stuff. And then we like sparked up a conversation and such a cool guy. I mean, we went out and seshed afterwards outside and the conversation went on. And I'm like, hey, come on the podcast. Let's talk some shop. You know, and I want to find out more about how you do things in your garden. Yeah. And him being uh, somewhat of a newer content creator. And actually, you can kind of say newer grower, too. He's been growing for two years. Yeah. Now, some two people years, say, oh, yeah. two years, that's a long time. Well, in the grand scheme of things, two years is... Yeah, There's a lot are. to learn more. Actually, yeah. I, I was shocked by the amount of information he knew being only two years in and uh, yes. made me kind of jealous yeah. because 14 years ago when I started my first two years, I had a fraction of the knowledge that he had now that he has now, yeah. uh, but really, really cool guy. Uh, I'm glad I had him. I'm glad I had him on. I think uh, some good information. I even learned a couple things from him, you know, he's only two years in, but I still learned some things from him. And that's why I like to have yeah. all folks from all, you know, beginners to experts on my podcast. Cause I really feel like yeah. you can take away information from everybody. There's nothing better. Exactly. I want to say there's nothing better, but it can be valuable to have a fresh set of eyes come in and give feedback, you know, yeah. cause we tend to overlook things as we do things repetitively in our gardens. We tend to kind of overlook things and hearing somebody else freshly come in and then bring up questions or say they do something a different way. Like, yeah, it adds value. Yeah. He almost, well, and you're, you're also me, running people, different, you know, you're sorry, go ahead, sir. People that knew also help you bring it back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying as the second set of eyes, it's like, like you said, we overcomplicate everything. So when you have somebody newer two, three years in, they go, why are you doing all this shit? <laughs> What is the point of all of that? Why don't you just do this? And it's like, you know what? You're right. You're absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's all the time that's why we love our grow me gardens on Friday nights because we get to hang out yeah. with with home growers and we learn something every Friday night. There's somebody that will drop a little tidbit here or there, or we'll be like, "What's that thing in the back corner there? What What are you doing over there?" And then we'll learn something new. So it's absolutely fabulous to be able to have that community and i mean when you started growing everything was underground and illegal and and you couldn't have the access to the information so to be able to have you know these amazing books 
at our at our fingertips and to be able to go on to these and listen to audiobooks and podcasts and and learn and learn from you you know it's it's absolutely amazing that's so cool to hear yeah i'm so glad that i can just put out content that's going to help people you know help people yeah. get started help people kind of continue their journey get to harvest um yeah it's it's amazing that this space is even uh, available you know, because like you said, back in the day, everything was illegal. So it's really cool that everything's has, has opened up. And I keep my fingers crossed that here in the States where, you know, get descheduled. You know, that's, that's kind of what we're aiming for is for cannabis to be yeah. descheduled and then uh, have a lot more yeah. freedom here. So let's hope. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, 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 it, it'll happen. It'll happen. I think, I think some of this, the suits have to move on from their positions and, and then it'll happen. You guys are leading the way over in Canada. We need to. Follow, follow suit. Yeah. Right? Oh, there, there's some mistakes over here too. You know, oh, yeah. they they allowed province to province, and then we've got the two provinces that are like, nope, not here. You're not growing here. What? Yeah. You can grow hey, everywhere else in the country. That. You're freedom for. Yeah. I actually just learned that. I think when we had pigeons on, I think it was just like a mm -hmm. year or two before that, and then it was perfect timing because one of the places that's actually illegal to grow is where he's from, and I was like, man. Yeah. What? But he's medical, what so you he, you're allowed medical. Yeah, yeah you're allowed you're medical. Not allowed to do the still the recreational thing, yeah. which is mind yeah. blowing to me that there's still two provinces here. It's federally legal, yeah. but there's two provinces in Canada that you're not allowed to grow in. So. Yeah, exactly. So get it together. Well, Chris, uh, we've, we're coming up to the hour here. We're not gonna we're not gonna keep you all day here as much as I would love to. Uh, do, is there anything new that we need to be on the lookout for, Mister Growit? Uh, I mean, I kind of already talked about that a little bit, uh, but I will mention that Garden Talk podcast is back now, weekly basis, uh, like you said earlier in the episode. Um, kind of scared some people thinking that I quit altogether, but I was just taking a break. Yeah. My book. Now I'm back full time every single week, every single Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. A new Garden Talk podcast releases with the amount of guests we have. I'm not going to do any spoilers, but so many good guests coming up just this first quarter of 2024. I'm super looking forward to, uh, you know, posting these episodes because I filmed a couple of them so far. They have been incredible. So Garden Talk Podcast, keep an eye out on my main channel. I'm going to be more active this year on the main channel. Um, you know, aiming to do at least a couple videos a month, two, three, uh, maybe even four videos a month weekly. That'd be great. But uh, you know, with the with having a daughter now, it's kind of it's kind of <laughs> crazy. You know? yeah. My priorities have kind of shifted a little bit, but for the most part, yeah. Audiobook drops. I want to have it dropped by March 1st at the latest on that new book. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Tune into From the Stash podcast. We've got a whole bunch of good guests coming there. And every other Thursday, we're on twitch.tv slash from the stash um, live stream. This Thursday, actually, tomorrow, we're going to be doing a live stream. So, come on over and tune in there. Oh, exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll oh, be yeah. there. For sure. We'll be there. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me on. This well, has thank been you so chill. Thanks yeah, so this has much. been really, really been cool. <laughs> It's been, it's been, you know, I'm, I still, I got to pinch myself. Like, I still don't think this is real. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, we definitely I think appreciate it was... you taking the time to come on and share yeah. with us and everybody who's here, your, your uh, cannabis journey, I guess you would call it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Yeah, this has been fun. I, uh, I'm, I think it was Papa Kush who invited me onto your Friday show. And I know it's like yeah. kind of yeah. open, open invitation, pop in whenever. So, yep. I'm going to keep that in mind and maybe in, you know, in the future at some point, you might, su might surprise you and come in there and hopefully be able oh, to hang out for a little exciting. bit with you guys. Yeah, so we'll awesome. Oh, fantastic. Oh so my we'll goodness. Oh. Every Friday night. So. That'd be cool. Every Friday. Yeah. Every Friday. Night, yeah. So yeah, yeah, anytime you want, pop in. Cool. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to hang with us. And uh, I'm going to go fangirl out now and <laughs> go smoke a big fat joint. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> All right, Chris. Thank you so much. And you have yourself an amazing rest of your day. Thanks. Oh my goodness, you that guys! Was so I, fun. It was a great hour. <laughs> so fun. It was so the fun. Oh, thank you, Chris.
I know. I was like, yeah. I'm like, I know he's busy and I know he's on a schedule. And I'm like, okay, I'm trying to look at the clock and I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. And a, thank you to the chat. Too. Super fast. Yes. Oh my yes, goodness. Thank you to everybody yes. in the chat. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, we appreciate all of you. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> And let your friends yes. know that we're over here now. Like we said, we've we've it, we've reached Instagram's limits. They were not kind to us, so we're just continuing picking up where we left off over there, and coming over here. So if, you know, tell your friends, grow me gardens every Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show your grow. You don't have to show your face yes. if you don't want to. Um, it's all about the gardens. We just want to, we just want to, and you don't even have to talk to us if you don't want to. You can just show your garden. We don't care. We can just talk <laughs> Yeah, we do enough for you. For everybody. Yeah. And if, uh, and if you guys have any, anybody that you want for nominate for, uh, Grow Me of the, Grow week, me of the week, feel free to DM either one of us, uh, the home grow page yeah. on Instagram and, uh, we can make that happen. And yeah. Saturday. At 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to yes. be on the best grow show with Chad Westport over on YouTube. The best one. The Chad, best one. My first interview ever, so that's going to be really exciting. <laughs> you know, not a lot yeah. of people get to say my very first you. interview I've, I've been in was with Chad Westport. You know that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm used right. to asking the questions, <laughs> so this is going to be definitely my, different. My first interview was with Gannix. <laughs> that yes. was my very first interview was with Gannix, so. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't everybody get ready can, uh, <laughs> Everybody can come and show your girls on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern yeah. for Buckeye Bud. Who Live here on to show YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Friday night, get those Friday night legs up, get those girls all cleaned up and ready to show your girl. All right, thank you again to Chris for joining us this afternoon. This all right, happy growing, everyone. Happy growing. So fun, oh my goodness. Oh.